I've been working on this art project for Bushwick Open Studios and it's been a lot of fun. My idea was to show our neighbors what makes Bushwick so beautiful. And the answer is the people, you all, our neighbors, the people who walk on the sidewalk, who ride the train and bus with you, who jog at the park and order bacon, egg and cheeses at the bodega. But to do this project, I just got to tell you, my anxiety was through the roof. A lot of you don't know about this, but I'm a total introvert. And to make this project a reality, I was approaching random people on the street and asking them to let me take a picture of them. Do you know how awkward and hard this was for me? I'm telling you, I was so anxious. My heart was racing. All these emotions rose up in me. I felt like giving up so many times. It consumed all my mental energy, all my emotional energy. And whenever someone would say no or ignore me, it felt like they pulled my heart out, my throat, threw it on the ground and stomped on it. I was seriously anxious. What gets you anxious? The past few years have given rise to unprecedented levels of anxiety, worry, and fear. And no doubt many of you have felt it as well. In fact, no doubt some of you may be feeling with some of these things right now, levels of insecurity and doubt and anxiety. In today's passage, Paul is going to address this very thing. Let's talk about it because this is a very real issue that many of us face. And if you're here today and you have been facing anxiety, if you've been overly worried to the point where you lose sleep and you have lost your appetite, if you have an overwhelming sense of fear, I just want you to know that you are not alone. And I believe that God's word has some encouragement for us today. So three things that I think we can learn from today's passage in regards to how we deal with anxiety. And number one is bring your anxieties to God. Paul writes this, Don't worry about anything, but in everything, through prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And here's the thing. We will face worry, anxiety, and fear. I don't think I need you to convince you. I don't need to convince you of this. We're all broken people living in a broken world, awaiting restoration from a perfect God. And so while we wait for that restoration, we will continue to struggle. What I don't want you to hear from Paul is, suck it up, what's wrong with you? Pull yourself up by your bootstraps. With someone who's facing worry and anxiety, that's the worst thing that you could tell them. It's not helpful. It can be demoralizing. It takes no consideration for the severity of what the other person is going through. And there's no type of sympathy or kindness. Here's the thing. As he writes these words, Paul has plenty to worry about himself. He's under house arrest waiting to hear back from Rome. And the death penalty is a very real threat for him. He has plenty on his mind and he has much to be anxious about. Did you ever consider that maybe as he writes this to the church in Philippi, that he's actually writing it to himself? Maybe he's experiencing anxiety and worry, crying himself to sleep, getting panic attacks, and telling himself, don't worry about anything, bring this to God. Don't worry about anything, bring this to God. If you're here today and you're experiencing anxiety, having worries, you're not broken, you're not used goods, and you're not useless. In fact, the Bible teaches us the exact opposite. It says that we're made in the image of God and that He cares for us. And this is why 1 Peter says, Give all your worries and cares to God, for He cares about you. Some of you have been trying to shoulder a burden that is simply too heavy for you. You have been lugging around all this extra weight that you were never meant to carry, and God is telling you to give it to Him. And here's why, according to 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7. It's because He cares for you. The God of the universe cares about you. Did you ever consider that? Like a loving father cares for his children. He cares for their safety. His heart breaks when their hearts are broken. That's what God is like. Have you been shouldering a burden you were never meant to carry? Would you be willing to be honest with yourself today and say, I've been carrying this anxiety and worry and I haven't even considered giving it to God? Now maybe you're asking, you to your, you're asking yourself, how do I give my burden to God? But Paul gives us the answer. It's not just forget about it. It's not just close your eyes and pretend like it doesn't exist. It's not self-medicating or getting high as a kite to help the problems temporarily float away. No. Here's what Paul invites us to do. He tells us to pray. To communicate to the God of the universe. The same God who cares about you. And he even gives us a template on how to pray. And this is number two. Pray, petition, give praise, and present your request. Here's how Paul says it. Don't worry about anything, but in everything, through prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. 
How many of you, when you begin to feel anxiety, your go-to thing is to pray? If we're honest today, oftentimes our go-to thing is to worry, is to roll up into a ball and cry, is to complain, to close in, absorb all the anxiety, causing us to eventually implode. And maybe you're thinking, Danny, really the answer is prayer? I just talk to the sky and feel better? And I'd say prayer is only as powerful as who you're praying to. If you're praying to the sky, the clouds and the stars in the sky, then it will not be very helpful. If you're presenting your request to me, sharing your concerns with a friend, they might give you some advice, but probably not be very understanding or sympathetic. But if you're praying to the God of the universe, the God who created and sustains all things, the God who knows the number of hairs on your head, who knows you by name, who knitted you together in your mother's womb, then that's a different story. Some of you have too small of a view of God, which is why your worry looks so big. But when you realize that your God is bigger than your problems, it's a no-brainer to bring it all to Him and to do so in prayer. And Paul gives us a little template that we can follow. Some of you are like, I don't know how to pray. I don't know what to say. Well, Paul gives you a template to follow. You can literally memorize this template, especially when you're experiencing bouts of anxiety. Or take a sheet of paper, write each of these out as bullet points or headlines, and then begin to list things under each of them. First, Paul says to petition. What does this mean? This is to first call out to God, to address God, to worship Him, to seek Him, and to say, God, I need you. And if you don't do something about what I'm going through, I don't know how I'm going to get through it without you. The prophets of the Old Testament used to do this all the time. They would call out to God in their moments of distress. They would remind Him of His promises. God, you you didn't bring us this far for nothing. You, You said you would accomplish your purpose. You said that you would give us this land. You said that you would bring about your promises. And what they were doing was petitioning God. It was acknowledging their need of Him, their dependence on Him. And when you petition God, you do the same. But when he says to go in with thanksgiving, that's what he says, to go with thanksgiving or to praise God. And here's the thing. When you're going through moments of worry and anxiety, you tend to focus on your problems and you forget your blessings. We tend to make much of our anxieties and make little of all the previous ways that God's delivered us and provided for us. Our moments of tribulation tend to make us ungrateful. And so the antidote is to recollect and remember all the great things God has done in the past. And this is why the psalmist wrote this. I will remember the Lord's works. Yes, I will remember your ancient wonders. When you begin to remember all that God has done for you in the past, it helps you understand that He's got you in the present and that He will deliver you to a better future. If God was faithful to you then, why wouldn't He continue to be being faithful now? It begins to develop within you a heart of gratitude as you recollect His faithfulness. It can transform your moments of pain into moments of praise. It will posture your heart in a place to know now to be able to hear from God. And then, after you've done all that, now you can present your request. God, I'm really going through it right now. I have extreme levels of anxiety. I don't know how I'm going to get through this. God, I need you. Can you take this away? Can you help me cope? Can you bring me some relief? You can present your raw and real request to the Lord. Lay it all out. There's no need to hold any secrets in or to hold back because He knows your thoughts and your heart anyway. So present your request. And when you do, He listens. When you do, He responds. Why? Why does He listen and why does He respond? It's one of the great mysteries of the Bible and of God Himself. We have a relational God who isn't distant but chooses to respond to us and chooses to draw near. Now how does He do that? The Bible says we have a mediator between us and God that gives us direct access to God. We're able to boldly approach the throne of God and petition and give requests because of Jesus. Because Jesus lived, died, and rose again, we can access and petition God. So, we have a pattern or a template that we can follow here in Philippians. Do you pray when you find yourself in moments of anxiety and worry? What do you pray? You can petition, you can praise, and you can present your requests. And when we do that, Here's God's promise. This is number three. The peace of God will guard your heart and mind. All right, now let's look at verse seven. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. When you have anxiety and worry festering in your heart and on your mind, you can experience a million other emotions. You know what you won't experience? is peace. 
when you're constantly chewing on anxious thoughts, when you're constantly meditating on your worries, you might feel fear, you might feel nervous, you might feel overwhelmed, but you won't feel peace. And this is part of the miraculous with God, that when we cast our cares before Him, when we petition, praise, and present our requests, what comes out on the other side of that is peace. And that's why Paul describes it as surpassing all understanding, because it just doesn't make sense. And here's the thing. I can just envision Paul penning these words, not even for the church, but as a reminder to himself in his own anxiety to cast his cares upon the Lord. Him offering up petition, praise, and presenting his request to the Lord. And in that process, Paul downloading peace from heaven and just saying, this doesn't make any sense, but this is the God that I serve. That Paul could be serving the prison sentence for doing nothing but proclaiming the gospel and say, rejoice in the Lord always. And then to experience a peace in the middle of one of the darkest, loneliest, anxiety-causing moments. And he's like, guys, I know this makes no sense, but I'm experiencing this almost real time as I write it to you. And you're dealing with anxiety and you're dealing with worry. And God wants to guard your heart and mind and he wants to give you peace. And what he says here echoes are echoes of what we read in the Old Testament and all throughout the Bible. Look at what the prophet Isaiah says. You will keep the mind that is dependent on you in perfect peace, for it is trusting in you. Part of the reason that we are so anxious, stressed, and worried, and on edge is because our minds aren't guarded. Our minds aren't dependent on God. It's so often dependent on other things, and as a result, anxiety, worry, and fear. Our minds are constantly polluted and bombarded by the things that we see on the news, the things we experience real time on the streets, the things that we feed ourselves through social media and videos. And all this information is being downloaded into our brain and it is feeding the anxiety within us. Or it is masking the symptom while never addressing the true hurt and brokenness below the surface wound. But when we're honest about our hurts and bring them before the Lord, God promises to do a miracle. And it's not necessarily to make the hurt go away. It's not necessarily to make the problems disappear. But He does promise a peace that surpasses all understanding. Why is this important? Because from your place of peace, you can realize your inability to save yourself and come to a place to depend on God. From a place of peace, you can acknowledge your brokenness and pursue the help that you need to get you through this time. Whether that's through pursuing relationships to pray with you, for you to confide in or to to help shoulder your burden. Or maybe it's through pursuing professional help, such as therapy or counseling, to help you cope and heal. From a place of peace, you can sit within your current circumstances and you can trust God to be doing a sanctifying work in your situation, knowing that on the other side of this, you will be closer to Christ and you will be more like Christ. Some of you came in today and you are in desperate need of the peace of God. You've been struggling for quite some time. You feel like you're hanging on by thread. You've been attempting to shoulder the burden alone. Here's what God wants to give you today. He wants to give you peace. A peace that surpasses all understanding. And let me be brutally honest with you today. The peace of God within your anxiety is way better than having your anxiety completely removed. And here's why. A peace from God within your anxiety will keep you absolutely dependent on God because He is the source of that peace. So you know you have to cling to Him desperately. But if you were completely healed, if your worries were removed and the source of your anxiety taken away, you would run back right to your vices. You would completely disregard God and continue along your way without living for and depending on the God who created you. And I know this because I've seen it way too many times. But God wants to keep you connected to Him. He wants you to depend on Him, to cry out to Him, to call on Him, to trust, to depend, to think upon, to communicate with Him. And He will give you peace and guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. And when you think about Jesus, I want you to understand something. That is that He understands you. Moments before Jesus would be led to the cross, He found Himself in the Garden of Gethsemane so overwhelmed and anxious for the soon coming crucifixion that He sweats drops of blood and prayed that God might even remove this cup from Him, provide Him another way out. But ultimately, He chose to endure the cross rather than to go around it. Jesus knows what it's like to feel the insurmountable pressures of life, to feel the burdens that you feel, the stresses that you undergo, the emotional turmoil that you sense. And here's what He did with that. He picked up his cross. He climbed up Calvary. 
He had nails driven through his wrists and feet. And while he was on the cross, he bore the weight of the sins of the world. And moments before he would die, he felt the abandonment of the Father and completely absorbed the wrath of God and died. He died so that our sins would be washed away by his blood. They brought down his body, they wrapped him in linens, and they placed him in a tomb. The work was finished. The sinless Lamb of God was slain for the sins of the world. And what ensued was three days of silence, three days of darkness, three days where it appeared that the enemy had won. But on the third day, because you cannot keep the Son of God down, Jesus rose from the dead. The stone was rolled away and Jesus burst out of the grave, conquering Satan's sin and death. So that all who would look to Him, all who would put their faith in Him, they could have forgiveness of sin, a new life, and their eternity can be secured. And guys, if you haven't put your faith in Jesus, I give you an opportunity to do so today. How did you come here today? Are you full of anxiety and stress and worry and fear? Bring it to God. You can't handle it on your own. So pray to God. Petition Him. Give praise. Recollect the goodness of God. And here's what will happen. God will give you a peace that surpasses all understanding. He might not take the problem away, but He will give you peace in the middle of the storm. God, today we bring our anxieties to You. We know that we can cast our worries on You. For, for, for You, they are not too heavy. We can do so because You deeply care for us. Would You help bring to mind Your goodness? We are so prone to forget in light of, of the focus of our anxieties, which tend to get all our attention. God, to help us remember, we praise you and thank you for your goodness. And I pray for the peace of God to fill all our minds. Help us experience peace in the middle of the storm. Guard our hearts and minds in Jesus' name. Amen.